We will now demonstrate some MySQL attacks that can be used in order to fake user authentication. First, we will demonstrate a login with a known valid username and password combination. For this demo, we will output all SQL commands that help explain the attack. To better understand how the attack works, we will show you the structure of the database. The database consists of one table, Users, and it has three fields. The first field, User ID, is an auto-incrementing integer used as a primary key. The next field, Username, stores the possible usernames that can be used to log into the system. The third field, ClearPass, stores the user's passwords in plain text, which is obviously very insecure. Currently, the user's table only holds one record, for the user admin with password, password. Now we'll examine how the PHP script processes and validates the authentication request. At the top of the script, we include some configuration files used to configure and open a connection to our database. Since we use the post method on our form, the script retrieves the year variables and stores them in local variables. Next, the actual query is built by combining the post data with a generic template. The script does not perform any data validation or sanitization. Instead, the user is given access to the page as long as any row is returned by the request. If the number of records returned by MySQL is greater than zero, the user is considered successfully authenticated. Now we will demonstrate some attacks on this poorly secured code. The first attack will be a comment attack. The attack works with a known username and uses the MySQL comment ability to bypass validation of the password. By using the MySQL comment, we effectively end the select request early. The end of the query is commented out and therefore the query only checks that a record exists where username is set to admin. The next attack uses the MySQL union statement in order to inject false data. We cannot edit the content of the database, but we can override the request by performing a union on each field. In this example, the union will cause hacker to be recognized as a username when logging in. We have successfully logged in as hacker. Note, in the validation script, the username is retrieved from the query result, not the post variable. While we have tricked this page into logging us in without a username or password, we have not actually modified the contents of the database. In this section, we will use the same authentication form to demonstrate a brute force login attack. By mimicking the behavior of the post request, we can try multiple logins until we get a successful login. We have written a small Perl script that uses a known user admin and dictionary attack for the password. The get page sub takes in a dictionary word and creates a socket to our web server. We then craft our post request to the validation page, which emulates what happens when you submit the login form. We then craft the content parameters to use our credentials, admin, and the dictionary word to test. We print out what credentials we are currently testing. We use regular expressions to test for the string, welcome to the admin. Since this string only appears on a successful login, we know that the password being tested works and we end the script. Another sub, load password list, simply reads in a list of passwords from a text file to test against. 
The script starts by loading the password dictionary, and then iterates through each possibility until the end of the list or a successful login. The script could also be modified to test usernames or go through every alphanumeric possibility. Now we will run the script against the login form to see if it will find the password. You can see each possible dictionary term being tested until it finds the correct password, which is password. Because the password is cracked in a matter of seconds, it demonstrates that a strong password policy is probably not in place. Next, we'll examine a case of insufficient data validation, and we'll see how this could lead to major security concerns. Here we have another example of a real-world application. This is a form that allows medical staff to submit an article from the internet in order to add it to the hospital's digital library. The script captures the entire contents of a given file so the librarian has all the necessary information to cite and format the article in the archive. The file get contents function reads the actual data of a given file. The input can be either a remote or a local address. Since there is no data validation or sanitization on the input string, this script is wide open to attack. First we'll show how a regular article on a web page is processed. An article from MMD has been submitted, and you can see that the script renders the file contents after submission. However, a malicious user could specify a local file address on the system instead of a website URL. In this case, we specify the Etsy password file. We will now be able to harvest all the usernames on this server. Since the contents of the file are simply submitted for later review, and the librarian is likely not an IT expert, this attack may never be detected. 